Hello everyone, my name is Venkatesh and in this video we are going to see how we can create AWS free tier account. In order to do, do that, uh, let's open a browser and then type in aws.amazon.com Okay, on the very first home page you should see uh, something called create a free tier account here. If you don't see this on your screen there's always a create an AWS account button on your top right corner so you can use either of these buttons to create AWS free tier account before we actually start creating an account let's see what does AWS free tier offers us so just click on this button over here okay so you have basically AWS offers three types of offers so there are few services which are always free there are services which are free for 12 months with a limited uh, service uh, there is a limitation to number of hours you can use or probably number of uh, uh, data uh, that you can store in terms of size and there are some uh, free trials that uh, AWS offers uh, you can always use them uh, during the trial period okay so if we just scroll down here you have a detail of uh, each service uh, what AWS free tier account provides you for example you can access an Amazon EC2 instance and you can run a single instance for up to 750 hours or a multiple instance that can run up to 750 hours so until uh, 750 hours you will be charged zero dollars and your billing would start if you exceed 750 hours for any of the Amazon EC2 machines. And this is per month basis. You can see here this is 750 hours per month, meaning every month this gets reset. Okay. And you are only charged for the number of hours your EC2 machine is running or your virtual machine is running. Similarly, it offers a 5 GB of S3 storage and 750 hours of RDS and 25 GB of DynamoDB and so on and so forth. So you can just scroll down here and get all the details. Okay, so now let's uh, start with the account creation process. So you can either click here or you can click here. Okay, so uh, basically you would need an email address and your phone number and a valid uh, credit or a debit card to create an AWS account you won't be charged for anything unless uh, you know if you exceed any of the free trial uh, hours or the storage limitation otherwise uh, you will still be under the free trial and uh, all the services that you use will be free to try anything okay so let me start by entering my email ID here Okay, then choose a password. You have uh, the details of what uh, combination of your password should be. Let me choose a password. We enter your password. Then choose an account name. I choose my name here. You can always change this name later once you log into the console. Then click on continue. Okay, looks like the password is not matching. Let me retype it. Okay, so it should be good. So on the second page, you should see uh, uh, information to be filled, your contact information. So you have two types. One is professional and personal. So for uh, unless uh, you're creating it for an organization, uh, you go with a personal account. So basically most of the time, the free tier account for you to play around AWS services and resources. So choose a personal account, type in your name, your telephone number. Make sure you're giving a, a proper phone number and your address details because your phone number is going to be used to verify a, a OTP. Let me fill in my address.
okay and then click on the agreement then create account and continue okay so on the third page you should see something for payment information so here you have to enter your credit card or debit card and you will be charged uh, obviously i'm creating from uh, indian account so i'll be charged two rupees so based on your country version you would be charged uh, a minimal amount on your card so let me enter my card details here so just enter your uh, card details here So after the card details are entered uh, you can enter your pan number if you have a pan number if you don't have it click in no you can also you enter your pan details later point of time then click and verify and add the card number i gave earlier was uh, some random number but i gave it a, a current number later on so make sure you're giving it a proper uh, details so this is taking me to my city account and waiting for an OTP I just got an OTP let me enter it here okay so, so one one final check uh, to confirm your identity so how do you want to verify through a phone call or a message so i'm going to enter my number here and then receive a message here type in the capture And wait for SMS. So once you have your four digit OTP code, enter it over here and then verify code. Okay, so your identity has been successfully verified. Click on continue. On the final page, you would see uh, what kind of plan would you like to select. So obviously, we're going to select for a free tier account. So I'm going to select it as free, the basic plan. Okay, so that, that's about it. So your account is created and you should see a welcome screen over here. And then based on your current role or whatever organization you are in, you can customize your profile accordingly and uh, of course you have some tutorials here to launch a virtual machine or to deploy docker and you can just start playing around the account okay so let me just sign into amazon console okay so at this moment i only have a root account to log in i'm going to use a root account to log in So root account is basically the email id from which you created your account let me type in the password so you win so it has taken you to a default region right and your account name and all the details and this is a default uh, screen what you see at the very beginning and click on services explore different services and the resource groups okay if you want, if you want to launch an ec2 machine here just click on this okay so basically uh, what it's saying is you have to wait for up to 24 hours to fully get your 
account active so it will not take uh, much time so you would get your account activated and you would also receive a welcome email from amazon then once all the things are active you can start playing around okay so let me open my email there it is so so with this particular date uh, i am creating this on 9th of april so i would have 12 months of free tire account starting today and uh, you can always check the details in your billing section and other stuff okay so wait for probably 24 hours and you should be able to get started with uh, you know playing around the different services of aws so that's all for this video thanks guys thanks for watching have a nice day ahead thank you bye bye hello everyone my name is venkatesh and in this course we are going to look at demonstration of aws virtual private cloud or aws vpc which can be typically set up for a multi-tier website with a web servers in your public subnet and the database servers in your private subnet and in the second demo we are going to look at what vpc peering is and how we can peer two vpcs within the same region to access a ec2 instance in vpc b from an ec2 instance in vpc a so without further delay let's get started with the demonstration thank you hello everyone my name is Vantish and uh, today I'm going to show you a small demo on Amazon VPC or Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. And this demo is based on the examples and scenarios that is provided on Amazon documentation. And you, I mean, the documentation provides four scenarios. Uh, uh, first one being VPC with single public subnet. You can use this if you are going to launch a simple web server, uh, probably a WordPress uh, site. Uh, or, or a simple website uh, for that matter uh, and you have a scenario too where uh, you launch a vpc with a public and private subnet uh, this can be used if you are going to launch uh, a web server in a public subnet which is supposed to have a internet connection uh, i mean internet facing connection and a private subnet uh, uh, where you can launch your db instances which uh, ideally should be restricted from your internet connection Okay, so you have scenario three, uh, VPC with public and private subnets and AWS side to side VPN access. And you have another scenario with uh, VPC private subnet only and AWS side to side VPN access. So the steps are very much clearly documented uh, in the documentation. So you can uh, uh, very simple follow each and every step and you will be able to achieve, uh, you will be able to uh, uh, reach out to each of scenarios well, very well. Okay and we are going to look at the scenario 2 here basically and the objective of uh, uh, this demo is to show you uh, how the uh, database servers or the db server which are in private subnet are restricted from internet access and uh, if you have to reach your database instances how you have to uh, 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 go through a private, I um, mean, the public subnet or uh, a NAT gateway or a NAT instance. So th that's the whole objective of it. Okay, so how, how, how your DB instance is restricted from your internet. Okay, so if you just click on the scenario 2 here, so he describes uh, uh, what kind of configuration you're going to make and uh, how it should be looking like and here uh, amazon gives you a very clear description of what kind of cedar block and what public private submit you're going to choose and what you're going to add i mean that, that's what you're going to look after uh, in in the demo okay and then if you're going to use ipv6 what you're supposed to do okay then your routing and your uh, how your main route table should be looking like how your custom route table should be looking like okay and uh, again, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not going to follow, uh, I, I'm not going to add each and every step here in the demo. So uh, only few few of it, what, what, which help us to uh, achieve our objective. Okay. So let, let's actually look at uh, uh, this diagram for a minute and see how, how it's going to be defined. Okay. Okay. So this is what we have. So first, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to define a vpc first okay 
in your uh, 10.0.0.0.16 uh, CDA block then uh, within the VPC so we're going to have two subnets so one is public subnet 10.0.0.0.24 and then you have another private subnet 10.0.1.0.24 okay then we're going to launch uh, we're going to configure one uh, net gateway and uh, uh, probably one everything is set up you're going to launch one instance in public subnet and another instance in db subnet okay and this is how your customer route table is going to be and how your main route table is going to be so basically the main route table what you have is uh, uh, <coughs> connectivity within the vpc should be allowed okay that is uh, uh, 10.0.0.0.16 and the target is local so what whatever you instances you have within your vpc should be able to connect right and you have uh, another destination where it is the destination going to anywhere and that is via your nat gateway right so similarly for a custom route table you have the destination 10.0.0.0.16 which is local so in any instance that is within the vpc should be able to communicate that's what this is all about and you have another route which is to anywhere in the world and that has to happen via internet gateway so igw id is your internet gateway and here the difference what you see between the custom route table and the main route table here is the custom route table what which is applicable for your public subnet it has a gateway to your internet i mean it, it has a route towards internet gateway that is to out that is for outside world okay so so whatever instance you launch here in your public subnet should be able to connect to your outside world so that's why you have a route to internet gateway so similarly whatever instances you launch in your private subnet okay if they want to reach outside your private subnet they have to go that is outside your private subnet if they want to go they have to go via your nat gateway okay so so this your igw is not directly attached here so whatever communication that happens to ha that happens to your private subnet instances has to happen via the nat gateway okay this, this is the one what you have here okay and this nat gateway is not is actually associated with your elastic ip that that, that is that, that is where uh, how your so instances in private uh, subnet will be able to access your internet Okay. So we are going to see how, how we are going to configure and how it's going to uh, reach uh, the internet or how you're going to access your database servers and that. Okay. Okay. So let's look at the demo now. Okay. So I'm logged into my Amazon console. Okay. I'll go to services and then have VPC in my history. okay so before we actually launch our custom vpc uh, let, let's look at what is the default uh, uh, attributes that is already available in your vpc so you can choose any of the region uh, you can launch in any of the region uh, i'm just choosing mumbai okay so let, let, let's actually look at what are the default uh, which is already available so uh, you have one vpc already available and it has two subnets there's one route table associated with and there's one internet gateway okay so this is the default vpc okay this is the default vpc what we have and uh, you have one uh, knuckles and uh, security groups i mean these are not default but uh, some of the security groups are which i had uh, created in the past okay so let's look at uh, the vpc here okay so so all, all this is the default vpc uh, we have not yet created our custom vpc okay i'm just uh, j i mean i'm just going through the default one so when we create a custom vpc we know what, what what's the difference between the default and a custom vpc okay that ge that gives us a better idea okay so this is the default vpc and uh, it has cdr blocks of 172.31.0.0/16 okay this is amazon default uh, uh, vpc cdr block and uh, what else you have okay i mean uh, normally you don't have a uh, name but uh, i just uh, tagged it under uh, this name so that i can differentiate with my custom vpc okay uh, aws default vpc is something i have chosen you can always choose any name here all right 
okay so now let's look at uh, subnets uh, so you have uh, two subnets available by default okay so again this is the name that I have chosen you can choose uh, uh, any name you want uh, let's look at what each subnet is about okay so if I look at uh, subnet A uh, it is associated with this knuckle all right and there is a route table associated with that we look into that okay so <clears throat> for this subnet you have anything that is within the subnet should be communicating right so the, the default is this is the local so wh whatever is within that local subnet they should be able to communicate with each other so this this route describes that and the second entry here is anything outside world should be you should be able to reach outside using your internet gateway igw is your internet gateway all right so this is similar to what we have seen here yeah okay oh let's say here this one all right okay now let's look at the other subnet uh, this is also again same thing so not much of a difference i think you have subnet for each uh, uh, availability zone not wrong all right so let's look at uh, where are these subnets attached to okay so i mean i can either go here or here so this is the ga internet gateway okay then we have already seen what uh, a route table is okay so this is a route table associated with your internet gateway okay so anything that is within the local subnet has to be communicable and the same thing whatever is you're able to reach outside world has to become as you can connect it via internet gateway okay so we've seen route tables we have seen internet gateway so this is all all your default one okay that the, whenever you log in this is already available okay now let's look at uh, elastic ip addresses so, so there's no elastic ip address associated as of now and now normally you don't get one you have to uh, allocate a new one uh, especially for our case we are, go we are going to do do that we'll see later okay then let's look at uh, nat gateways there is no nat gateway as of now by default it's not there so you have uh, uh, default uh, knuckles uh, i'm not going to discuss knuckle in this because uh, uh, I mean, we're not going to use it for now for this demo and there are security groups I mean again uh, this is the default security group that comes and these are the custom ones which I had created in the past for some other exercise okay so this is the default one so let's look at what it has uh, okay so default security group it just allows all the traffic that is coming from this source okay <clears throat> okay so what else we have okay that's it all right so those are the default settings what you see in your uh, default v vpc now let's uh, launch a custom vpc and see what we can achieve all right so again uh, you, all the four scenarios you can explore it here so one with a single public subnet and you have public subnet and a private subnet which uh, we are going to look at it then the other two exercise which if you, if you want to achieve it okay all right <clears throat> so now let's look at our actual uh, demo so you're going to configure a custom vpc and with the slash 16 network and we are going to launch two subnets okay the public subnet instances uses elastic ip address to access the internet private subnet instances uses internet via the nat gateway right so let's launch this okay so before that give it, let's see okay so here I mean, so basically it's a, a small demo of um, how it looks like your uh, VPC you have a public subnet you have a private subnet so whatever is private is like restricted within it and you have a NAT instance that connects to this right okay so now let's launch it so when you actually use a VPC wizard so uh, Amazon actually automatically pops up uh, uh, the uh, public subnet and private subnet whatever you want to use you can always change this address i mean i can choose this 10.0.0.3 slash 24 and i can choose this 
a different okay whatever i mean whatever uh, you can choose for demo okay i'm going to leave it default okay so <coughs> so this is a cedar block what we are going to use uh, 10.0.0.0 and let's call this uh, vpc lab right and uh, i am going to leave everything uh, default uh, not to only change the name so i can easily recognize them okay so what you have to note on here is you're going to launch your public subnet in 10.0.0.0/24 and your private subnet in 1.0/24 all right so <coughs> now it is important that we allocate an elastic ip here uh, unfortunately we have not defined anything so i cannot choose anything here uh, so let if i try to create it has to show an error yeah all right so we don't have an elastic ip address so if you want your db instances in your private subnet to be communicate to communicate or your uh, instances in your public public subnet have to communicate so you need to have an elastic ip address right so let's do that and then come back to this again okay let me open another window here okay so i'm going to okay here it is okay i'm going to create a new elastic ip okay i'll lock it so i have got my own elastic ip address please note that these elastic ips are very limited so you cannot uh, just go on creating random uh, number of elastic ips so amazon actually restrict you to create only five elastic ips per region okay so let's have this okay so this elastic ip again we are going to create only for uh, the scenario two. I mean, the scenario one doesn't require uh, your elastic IP because all your uh, uh, instances are in your public subnet. All right. So let's uh, name this for our is the recognition VPC lab elastic IP. All right. Okay. So you have your elastic IP created now. Okay, so this is the whatever default value. So you just have an IP address over here, nothing else. Okay, now let's go back to our VPC. Okay, I want to relaunch the configuration wizard. Okay, so this is VPC lab. VPC labs public submit. I'm going to call this VPC lab private submit. Okay, so rest all I'm just going to leave it by default. And here I'm going to select this the elastic IP we just created. Okay, so that's the one which is available now. All right, so rest I'm going to leave it default. Let's say create a VPC. It's going to take a few times. So as I saw, it started creating a public submit, private submit, and then your NAT gateway and all those things, right? <clears throat> I mean, it's not necessary that you have to create only through a wizard. You can always uh, uh, directly create your VPC. Uh, but when you create uh, a VPC directly, again, you'll have to uh, go to each and every tab here, create uh, subnets and create a route table and start associating them with your uh, custom VPC and all. So either way, whatever you feel uh, comfortable, you can do that. For example, if I say here, VPC dashboard. Okay, if I select on here, I have an option to create a VPC. The same thing, so I can just uh, say test VPC here. Then just a CDR block. I'll specify a CDR block here. Sixteen. Okay, that means you can, I can create it here, but again, once this is done, I'll have to start uh, associating your subnets, routes, and all those things. Okay. okay now let's look at this. Okay, it is still creating. It, it takes some time to uh, create your NAT gateways and all those things. Let's wait for a minute.
so meanwhile if I have to go here and start looking at uh, the components of my uh, custom VPC I think they should be already getting created so for example now initially it was two subnet now I have four subnets okay the route tables again added internet gateway I have only one internet gateway I have two internet gateway now all right so I did not have a NAT gateway earlier now I have one NAT gateway okay so now you have your vpc successfully created okay let's click on okay all right so this is your default so this is my custom vpc okay so this is the ip4 sida we're going to use and this is my main route table okay don't worry about NACL. I mean, we're not going to use that in demo. But again, there, you can still use NACL and security groups to control how the traffic flows, bet flows between your public and private uh, uh, instances. All right. So here it also mentioned which uh, is your default VPC. So this is my custom and this is my default. All right. So let's look at it. So whatever we define, we're going to see here. This is the block what we define. Okay, now let's look at each components. All right, so now when I created a VPC, I specified about public and private subnet. So we have both, right? So now let's look at the individual one. So this is my public subnet. Okay, if you remember, we gave this as IP address, right? 10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
So there is 0 to F455. So this is explicitly associated with subnet. So this is your public subnet, right? So let me do this. This is a public subnet route table, right? So this route table is explicitly associated with your public subnet. So, and my this is a private subnet. Alright, so we have two routes also created. This is your default. So, again, the same thing what we discussed earlier. So, here also, I mean, if you want to cross check why it is which is public or private, either you can check the subnet association or you can also check the routes associated with it so the one which is having a route to internet gateway is your public the one which has your routes to NAT gateway is your private clear I mean, there are multiple ways how we can cross check it okay so now let's go to IGW internet gateway okay so this is my VPC lab Okay, so I mean you can also see this is the VPC does also this was your default. <coughs> Alright, and uh, you had created your elastic IPs here. Okay. And your NAT gateway. Okay, so this is your VPC lab. Right, so this NAT gateway is associated with your elastic IP address. All right, and this NAT gateway, how do we know that it is present? Normally, your NAT gateway, NAT gateway is supposed to be present in your public subnet, right? So this is your NAT gateway, and it should be present in your public subnet. If you look at here, if you look at the subnet here, this is your in your public subnet, right? That's why we have named it, so it's easier to recognize. Otherwise, we have to so look at this subnet ID and we'll be able to recognize uh, where it is, right? So in that gateway, it is in your public subnet and it has your elastic IP address assigned. All right. Okay, I'm not going to look into these things. Uh, don't want to confuse it further. All right, so this is done. So we have everything ready. So we have our VPC ready. Let's look at this diagram. So we have the VPC in the SIDAR block. We have public subnet. We have defined a private subnet. And when we defined it, automatically created your route tables. So the custom route table in your public subnet. It's allowing your local communication as well as the communication to the outside world is through internet gateway. That is this. Here in your main route table, which is in your private subnet. So communication within your local servers allowed and you want to communicate to outside world you have to go via the NAT gateway which is this all right so now we are left with the web server or the DB server so let's launch two servers and uh, see how whether we'll be able to communicate from outside world whether we'll be able to ping or not all right so we will need a security groups to be defined so we'll define it while we launch it okay So now let's go to services EC2. Okay, so I'm going to launch a new instance. So you can select any any so here the important thing is uh, by default it is going to a default vpc i'm going to change this to a custom vpc what we created all right and then uh, the subnet 
so let's say this is my web server so i'm going to launch it in public subnet and by default for any custom vpc your auto enable of your ip address is disabled so i'm going to enable this because i need a public ip for the instances in public subnet i'm going to enable this uh, rest all i'm going to leave as it is i'm not going to share change anything all right so let me go to next step here okay so i'll leave that as it is probably a given name vpc web server all right okay so next thing is we need to configure a security group for this so let's create one vpc lab web sg i'll call it as web sg all right okay so basically uh this is a web server right so it should be you should allow your connection from http port https port and you want to do ssh to the client so you need to allow ssh connection and uh, if it's a windows server normally you allow your rdp as well i mean the one what we are creating is a uh, uh, linux server but your, your security groups you can apply later to instance which you assign which you create right so if you're going to create a windows server you may need that as well so that's why i'm going to uh, i mean you can select rdp as well okay rdp right here and from anywhere to anywhere okay so th these are the things what 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 you need for a web server okay so for to make things easier i mean it's not something that you do uh in, in a real case scenario what i'm going to do is i'm going to allow, just allow everything okay okay again this is not something that you do in a real real case scenario this is just for a demo i chose everything so whatever uh connection you are trying to these instances from anywhere outside the world within the uh, subnet or anything i'm going to allow it okay the reason why i'm choosing this is i i just want to uh, uh help help you understand better between the uh web server storage security groups and db security groups i, I i'll show you that how how it differs later okay so for now let's consider i'm going to allow everything here okay review one launch Okay, I'm going to launch this uh, so you can choose a new pair or uh, for now I'll just select and whatever is already existing you can create a new new key pair if you want okay don't, don't worry about the name there uh, that was created for some other purpose I'm just going to use that key pair okay so it's creating okay meanwhile let's launch another instance which is our DB server in private subnet right so let's select uh, probably a different uh, version of it right just that helps us in the demo maybe okay i'll go with the ubuntu version okay so now again same thing uh, so instead of default i'm going to select our custom vpc then here instead of public i'm going to select this in a private subnet all right so for a private subnet instances you don't need public ip so i'm not going to uh, change this parameter so rest i'm just going to leave as it is okay so that is default then name vpc lab db server okay so let's create another security group here this is important now okay so choose vpc lab db yes right. okay so now as you mentioned uh this servers in your 
private subnet right they should not be accessible from outside world okay that is one of the uh, objective of this uh, entire demo right so what i'm going to do instead of allowing everything now i'll allow all the traffic okay don't worry about whether it's https rdp or uh, whatever it is okay so instead here what i'm going to do is i'm not going to allow it everything so i'm going to restrict this only through public subnet that is only via the security group which is in public subnet okay so now this is the main difference here so whatever instance that are available in your db uh, private subnet so i'm going to apply this security group here and this security group is going to restrict access to instances in private subnet that is coming in only from the NAT gateway or the NAT uh, instance. Okay, how do I do that? Let's go here and uh, let's see. Subnet. So this is my public subnet, right? Uh, where is it? Okay, where is my NAT gateway? Okay. Okay, so this is my NAT gateway. Okay. If I clear this, my security group. Okay, this is my this is my security group, right? VPC. Right. Okay, I'm going to copy this group ID. So here I'm going to specify that. Okay, so that means whatever is coming via this security groups. Okay, so that is the output it's going to allow. It's going to you are able to connect from here. Right. So say it will be one launch. I'm going to use the same key pair here again don't worry about the name all right so let's see okay so now you have pc filter for it okay so now we have two one is your web server and one is db server So your web server is already ready. So now this is in your, it has a public IP address assigned because it's in public subnet. Okay, this is your subnet. Okay. Your private subnet, uh, your DB instance is also ready. Again, we did not have public IP address assigned, so you don't see anything here, right? It has only its private IP. Okay. Now, let's try to connect to your web server okay now go here okay so i have my key file here so let me try to connect Okay, so this is my public IP. Okay, how do I connect? You can go here, select your connect option, just copy the entire thing. And you can just paste it here. Okay, so yes. Okay, so now you're logged in. Right. Okay, so this is your web server. So you're able to easily connect your web server from internet, right? I can easily log in. So because I allowed every connection, so I'm able to do SSH as well, right? So if you want to look what it is. Okay, so this is my host name. Okay, and this is running on a Linux machine, all right? Now let's look at our DB server. If we get launched, okay. Now DB server is ready. All right. 
so now let's try to connect okay so now it doesn't have any of the public ip if you see it is associated with this particular security group okay we can just check out all other options okay now if i try to let's see what is the connect option okay so what it says is you can connect here right i will copy the same way right just like i did for public i'm going to do it here again so when i try to connect obviously it should not connect right because you have defined in such a way that it allows only connection from your instances in your public subnet not from our outside world right okay so it's time it's not able to connect so now what how how do i connect to this so one way is i can connect via this right so here whatever is available within the vpc i can log into this server here and then connect right so how do i do that so from here i can do the same ssh right but here it, it it won't allow me because i don't have this key pair within this server right i don't have this key pair so you need to have a key pair to allow it i don't think it will allow me but obviously see it says permission denied you don't have that key okay let's try to copy that key here okay so now that is copied that means i should have it here okay okay so i now have it so i may have to change the permission okay do this okay so now that is done so now let's try to connect this server from a server within your vpc right right we'll copy this again as it is where are we okay not this okay so now i am in server 10.0.0.172 right so i'm going to try to connect to your private instance instance in private subnet from instance in public subnet all right so did we come in or no we are in how do i know that so this is my ubuntu machine whereas my earlier was my linux machine right and if you see the ip address it's 1.249 the earlier it was 0 0.172 okay so this is my previous machine here okay so here this was my machine in public subnet 10.0.0.172 and this is a linux machine here then when i try to connect to Ubuntu machine which is inside uh, my VPC or uh, private subnet and whatever to run here you can see I am now connected to Ubuntu machine how do I know that let's look at host name okay it's so different and okay. 
okay so this is my ubuntu machine so my the machine in my public subnet was red hat okay so what we did here is we restricted the server in my private instance right which is this okay we restricted this db servers of access from outside world so these are allowed to be accessed only from the servers within this and they access via the nat gateway okay so that that's how it is already configured so we did not configure all this this when we took a vpc wizard amazon did that help okay and in order to access this we first logged into something within your private subnet so uh, normally you can use the uh, nat instances normally i mean i could have created one more instances the instead of using this web server right so consider that as your nat instance altogether so using that instance i was able to get in to a database server or the instance in your private server. that's what we did all right so that was the whole uh, uh, demo that uh, all about okay so <clears throat> i hope that uh, is some helpful at least okay i'm going to come out of this now okay so now i'm out of Ubuntu machine. Now I am in Linux machine. You can see the change of IP address here, right? Okay. So we created a VPC in this header block. We created a public subnet. We created a private subnet. And while we created all these things, Amazon did help us with the custom route table with this uh, routing options and then the main route table with the routing options. All right, and then we launched an instance in public subnet and then we launched an instance in private subnet. Okay, and we also saw the demo of how you can access the servers in your private subnet from a server in your public subnet. All right, so since we limited that access only via coming from the security group here, it allowed only the public uh, uh, subnet instances to access this. All right. So that's called for it and uh, we may start uh, dismantling our VPC what we studied. Okay, so that was the whole part of the demo and uh, as we dismantle our VPC, there are some interesting points uh, that we can cover in fact actually. Let's look at it. All right. Okay. Okay, now let me go to my VPC dashboard. Okay, so now we have two VPC, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here and delete what happens. Let's see. Obviously, it should not get deleted, right? Because you have your EC2 instances which is running on that. So one cannot just go directly and delete it, right? It should not allow that. I mean, obviously, Amazon is very clever not to allow that. Let's try. I mean, we lose nothing to try it, right? Let me delete this obviously so when i'm trying to deleting this vpc now see the interesting part here this vpc what we created is associated with all these things what are those now the vpc contains one or more instances and cannot be deleted until these instances have been terminated so you have your db server you have your web server which is associated with vpc so these components have to be first terminated okay then you have network interfaces okay you have three network instances why do we have three why not two any cases okay so one is your public subnet one is your private subnet or the i mean uh, the public server and the db server what is the other one okay let's look at it the other one should be for your elastic ip address okay you can also click here to see what instance it has okay and again this vpc contains a nat gateway and cannot be deleted until that has been deleted okay so whatever we discussed the scenario here it is saying it is associated with all these things okay so fine so we have to start dismantling one by one so in order to delete all these things right so we have vpc associated with your server 
with your network interface cards and with your NAT gateway. So all this has to be terminated first. Okay, so NAT, let's look at uh, okay, where are we? Okay. Okay, let me close this and reopen better. Okay, okay. So let's see the instances, then the network interface card and the NAT gateway. okay so for this vpc it's already filtered so we have two instances let me stop them It may take some time, so I should be kicked out here. Yeah, so the connection is lost. Okay, so your DB server is stopped. Goodbye. So, uh, the question now is if you stop this instances, would your VPC still list this? The answer is yes okay so as long as the server is not terminated you will still have that vpc associated with this instances okay okay so just by term stopping those instances it will not release your vpc being associated with this okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to terminate these instances oh let's see let's try a refresh here and see what it shows okay delete vpc still showing the same thing okay let's terminate this okay so it's showing it is associated with this yes i won't terminate it okay so done so this is done this instance is terminated okay, it didn't take much time but so now let's see okay so you can see the difference right so whatever it was associated with the ec2 instance that is gone so now we are left with and again the even the network interface what was associated is also gone it's obvious like you shut down you terminate an instance the network interface associated with that instance is also gone now what you see here is your elastic ip address network interface eni okay so let's look at that here okay so this should be gone now ideally i'll just refresh and this should be gone yep that's it okay so now we have this and this should be disassociated as well okay now let's try okay if i try to detach it should show me a warning yeah okay so it says that i'm not eligible to detach because let's see why even if i say force also it won't go yeah right so because this eni is actually associated this uh, elastic uh, uh, interface is associated with your nat gateway right so you and this is in use here so until and unless this NAT gateway gets disassociated with your ENI, you won't be able to delete it or detach it. Okay. Now let's go to your NAT gateway. Okay. This is the one, right? So now first do this. Let's delete this NAT gateway. Okay. So it is deleting this.
and time. Okay, so that is done. So your NAT gateway is deleted. So now let's now try to delete this uh, network interface. Let's say detach. Okay, it's now getting detached. Okay, now let's see what 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 else is associated. Action delete. Okay, it's gone already. Probably it took some time to refresh it. But now if you see uh, all these things, uh, it's showing that one it has nothing associated. But let's see, well, we have one more important component that we did not delete. Your elastic IP. Okay. So you, these elastic IP are chargeable, though you are in a free tire account or anything. Uh, these are if, if even if they are not used or they are not associated with any of the instances, then you, are, you will get charged for it. Interestingly, if you are going to use this elastic IP and if you are going to associate with any of your interfaces or EC2 instances, you won't be charged for it. Okay, so I'm going to release this address. Okay, so the address is released. So that should help me to release the. Uh, where is it? Here. Network interface. Okay, I think that's already gone. Okay, what I see is a different ENI which was created for the other purpose. Okay, so now let me go to this VPC. All right, so I think we almost have everything de detached from here, so I can should be able to delete it. Okay, got. Yep. So your VPC is gone. So that was the whole point. So it's just a small demo. It's not like uh, not sure if it uh, if it is helpful in any way. The whole point was just to show that how do you access uh, your instances in your private subnets from an instance in your public subnet and how you can restrict its access from a internet okay so again it, I, I did not cover each and every step what it was described in this documentation uh, especially did not touch the uh, knuckle and security group part you can always try it out okay so this is the this is this is the part where we did not touch much of it just created the security groups though but hopefully this will give you a good heads up on uh, what uh, public and private subnet is and maybe you can do a better lab with that just hope so again thanks for listening i guess it's been a very long uh, demo in fact should not be called a demo now it's been almost an hour but thanks again guys uh, thanks for listening uh, you have a great day ahead thank you bye bye so before we start with the demo let's look at uh, how a vpc architecture looks like and how a vpc peering works so uh, basically VPC uh, you have a different components so we will not go in depth of each and every component we will just try to look at the concept of, of the topics what we require for VPC pairing so basically you have uh, your EC2 instance in your uh, different uh, subnet and you have uh, a default router and an internet gateway which basically helps you to connect to your EC2 instance in your public subnet and the default router has a route table which connects to all the local EC2 instance and a route to internet gateway which is used to connect your EC2 instance to outside world that is from your internet and basically VPC pairing on here what we have is if you want to try to connect <coughs> two instances which are in different VPC again we are talking about VPC pairing here so these two VPC are two different VPCs and we are trying to communicate <coughs> the EC2 instance from one VPC to another.
So let's say we have VPC, VC, EC2 instance in VPC A with the CIDR block 10.0.0.4/32, and we want to communicate with another EC2 instance which is in VPC B with a CIDR block range of 172.131.0.8.32. Okay, so let's look at the demo. What we do in the demo is we'll create two VPCs, VPC A and VPC B with the two different CIDR blocks and we'll try to connect these two EC2 instance, right? Okay, so I'm in my default I mean, we will we are going to do this as a VPC pairing for the same region. So this is my VPC. So <clears throat> let's create two VPC first. Okay, so this is my default VPC. So let's create two VPCs first. So I'll name them VPC A. And uh, let's choose a side block 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Okay, and the rest I'm going to leave as it is. Okay, so I have now one VPC created. Let's create another VPC. Let's name it vpc b let's use a different side block 172.31.0.0 slash 16 and the rest i'm going to leave blank i'm sorry default <clears throat> okay so we now we now have both the vpc created okay i'm just Going to enable the DNS host names here so that it will be easier for us to connect to EC2 instances within the VPC. Okay, so now we have VPC A, VPC B, and both have different cider blocks. We'll try to here these two VPCs. So on the left hand side just scroll down to pairing connections. Okay, ignore this. Okay, now let's create a new pairing connection. You can choose any name you want. We'll call it VPC pairing. Okay, so now <coughs> here we select the request to VPC. You can select either one of them. <clears throat> so let's go with uh, VPC A as a requester. Let's keep A as a requester and we will choose VPC B as our acceptor. So again, VPC peer you can create within the account or if you have a VPC outside your own account or if you have multiple accounts, you can even create a VPC pairing within the account as well as within another region. Okay, within the account, another region, or you have another region, another account, that's also possible. Okay, so we are going to see within the account, within the same region. Okay, so we have created already VPC A as requester. Let's go to VPC B as acceptor. Okay. So we have the requester with 10.0 CDI block and VPC B as an acceptor with 172.31.0.0 CDI block. Okay, let's create a connection. So once you have it, you will get a successful message that it has been requested. So you need to accept this connection. So just say okay here. Okay, now if you look at the status, it will be pending acceptance. All you have to do is go to actions, accept the request. Okay, so say yes, accept. So now once you have it, your VPC will be established. So now it's very important that you modify the route table for the for the VPC pairing to work. And this is very very critical step. Let's look at how to do it. So just click on modify route tables now, or you can just click OK and then 
in your VPC wizard. You can scroll down to route tables here and then do the same thing. Okay, when my VPC is active here, let's look at the route tables. So these are the route tables that was created by default when we created the VPC. So this is the route table for VPC A and this is a route table for VPC B. Right. <clears throat> so it's important that uh, we have a proper routing in place for a VPC peering to work. Okay, now let's look at VPC A and let's go to route table. So <clears throat> to make our life easy, let me rename this. Okay, so now we have uh, EC2 instance in VPC already up and running and uh, EC2 in VPC B is coming. Okay, so let's try to log into VPC EC2 instance in VPC A because that's where we configured our internet gateway, right? So Click on this, copy the URL here, I have my <coughs> keeper here, so I'm going to launch a bit bash. You can use putty or any other software which you can want to connect to your LAN instances. <coughs> okay, this is okay so we are in right so we are inside your ec2 instance in your vpc a so its ip address is like 10.093.239 okay now from vpc here this the ec2 instance from here we should be let's try to connect to ec2 instance in vpc b So we have our EC2 instance in VPC B also ready. So if we try to connect via SSH, definitely will not be able to connect because we don't have a internet gateway defined for this VPC, right? Let's give it a try. So obviously it's not going to connect it will time out in a couple of minutes because we don't have a internet gateway defined so obviously you won't be able to connect it from the outside world okay so now let's <clears throat> look if we are able to connect to this instance from instance in vpc a so when i say connect i should be able to ping to this server so let's look at the ip address of this server so this is your ip address Let's see if you're able to ping. Excellent. So now we're able to ping your EC2 instance, which is in VPC B from an EC2 instance in VPC A. This shows that our VPC peering is working fine. Now, if we want to connect or log into this, we need the key pairs right so let's get those key pairs here so to get the key pairs Right. 
So I'm just trying to copy the Linux key pairs to an EC2 instance in VPC <coughs> A, right? So if we look at here, so I don't have anything here. Let's cop copy the key pair here. Okay, it is done. So we have a key pair here. Okay, the permissions. And we'll change the ownership. We have the key pair here, then let's try to connect from here. Right? So, this is your connection pair for EC2 instance in VPC B. And VPC pairing always works on private IP address and not the public IP address. So, we need a private IP address. This is the private IP address. Okay. There we go. Right. So now we are logged into EC2 instance in VPC B. How do I know that? Because if you look at the prompt here, it has changed to the IP address of the EC2 instance in VPC B. Earlier it was this. Right. Just to get confirm, let's look at the host name. So the host name IP address is 172.31.34.126. Now I'll come out from here. Now I'm back to my EC2 instance in VPC A. Okay, this IP address. Let's look at the host name. There we go. So <coughs> We were able to successfully connect the EC2 instance in VPC B from an EC2 instance in VPC A. And that proves that our VPC pairing worked within the region. Now let's actually try to remove the connectivity and see if we are able to connect. Let's remove the VPC pairing and see if we will be able to connect it. Okay, I'll go to. Okay, sorry go to VPC dashboard pairing connection okay so let's take this out we don't have option to disable it all we have to do is either remove the routing table or delete it okay let's look at the routing table <coughs> Okay, then I'm going to remove this route, save it changes. Now let's see if we are able to connect. I'll try to ping the server. So that didn't actually work. So we try to we remove the VPC pairing and we are trying to ping the server. We are not able to ping. Obviously, we will not be able to connect as well. So after a couple of minutes, this is going to time out time of the connection. Okay, so that's as simple as that. So let's go back here and add a route table. 
and as out so from <coughs> 10 dot over we are looking at so 172 dot 31 dot is the one via the pairing connection save it so whatever you do within the vpc gets reflected immediately you don't have to wait even a minute or a second so it should get reflected immediately so now let's look at let's try to ping there you go we are able to ping successfully if you try to connect we should be able to connect as well see as simple as that so we logged in if you see the ip address here okay now let's see what happens when we are connected in and we lose the pairing connectivity okay so I'm going to go here again, remove this, save changes, done. No, it's hung. I'm not able to type anything here. So I have already lost the connection. I've already lost the connection, right? Okay, I lost the connection. Let me reconnect again to EC2 instance in VPC1. connected here obviously we still haven't <coughs> established the VPC pairing connection so our ping should not work here right so this is not working so let's go back to our table and add the routes again Two dot thirty one. So pairing connection. Save route. Let me try a ping. That works well. So that's it. So it's very simple demo. Well, we were able to successfully communicate to an EC2 instance in VPC B from a VPC from an instance from VPCA. So that's all for this demo. Thank you guys. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.